beautiful keep saying gorgeous beautiful <laughs> i don't know what else to wear to say all right take two i'm just gonna start from the top yeah if you ever wanted to know how to do a balayage on a dark brunette the quickest way possible, this video is for you. And if you're new here, my name is Morella Minnelli and I'm a hair educator and salon coach. And I'm so excited because I'm going to be using Kenra Professional Clay Lightener on a natural level 3 canvas. And I'm going to take her to a level 8 so we can create a gorgeous bronzy blonde finish. But before we get started, make sure you hit that subscribe button and turn on all notifications so you don't miss a video. Now let's go ahead and get started. First things first, let's assess our canvas. So she is a natural level three, virgin level three in the back with some highlights and just a few glazes right here in the front. Now she went ahead and in applied her own highlights throughout the front. She is a hairstylist and I thought she did a really beautiful job. But as a hairstylist, it's almost impossible to put highlights in the back on yourself. So this is why we got a little bit of a shelf going on. So our overall goal is to give her a lot of dimension, an overall brighter effect, and just give her a bronzy finish. So the way I'm gonna do this is pre-section her. Now she does have a side part. And in order to find her natural fall, I do like to push the hair up after combing it down. Just find out where it naturally wants to live, what falls forward and what falls back. From there, I'm able to create my guide and pull that soft money piece that we're gonna create in the front and isolate it by taking it all the way behind the ear and then clipping that away. For this project, I'm going to be using Simply Blonde Clay Lightener at a one-to-one -one mixing ratio with 30 Volume Developer. So what I love about this clay lightener is that it is specifically designed for balayage and open air techniques. However, I am working on a level three canvas, so I am going to be applying it into some foil. However, this does give you a nice eight levels of lift and you're going to see how much lift we're going to get out of this clay lightener on a level three canvas. For my secondary lightener, which I'm actually going to be putting into some highlights or baby lights that are going to live right on top of my balayaged pieces, I'm going to be using Beyond Bond Lightener at a one to two mixing ratio with 20 volume developer. Now, both of these lighteners are developed with dual bond complex, which is basically going to help protect the hair during the lightening surfaces by enforcing strong bonds. The main differences between the Beyond Bond is that it's going to give you up to nine levels of lift. And this is an ideal lightener for lots of different blonding surfaces. So I'm going to be alternating my two lighteners and I'm really excited to show you exactly how I created this pretty dramatic brunette to blonde transformation. So I'm starting out in the back section, creating a V right onto the occipital. Then I take my weaving comb and simply highlight right on top of that and insert my foil. So I'm overall going to be taking my lightener all the way up to the root line, but I'm not so focused on making it look like it's growing right out of her scalp because I am going to be doing a color melt later. But the purpose of this highlight is so that way it's going to give me a nice bright blonde effect right on top of my balayage pieces. So all of the highlighted pieces in foils is the Beyond Bond lightener with the 20 volume. Because I'm working with a virgin canvas, there is really no need to use anything higher than 20 volume in this foil. So my main focus is to create, like I said, that brightness right on top. And just to keep the foils kind of out of the way, I do like to try fold them. So I do this by folding it twice and then I'm going to clip it right on up so it's out of the way. So the next step from here is I'm going to split this right down the middle and I'm going to tease this entire section. Now, the reason why I decided to do that is because she has tons of little baby hairs right underneath. So there was no need to do any pull out. She's going to have plenty of depth and dimension. So from here, I'm adding that coup board with the little teeth and that's going to push up and hold any of those little baby hairs out of the way as I start to paint with my clay lightener. Now you do have some options with this clay lightener. Like I mentioned, it is formulated specifically for you to do open air, but because of the dark canvas that I am working with, I wanted to make sure to incubate it 
with the foil. So the way that I do that is as soon as I get that nice blend that I'm really loving, more of that surface paint to saturated paint towards the ends, this is where I'm gonna add that foil and further paint it on and then flat lay another foil right on top and then move on to my next section. So overall, this entire technique is going to bring up those highlighted pieces pretty close to the root area and then everything that's more of a balayage that's painted with my clay lightener is gonna be much more rooted. So you can kind of already envision exactly what type of effect we're gonna have. This is gonna create tons of dimension. Plus, since we are using two different lighteners, we're gonna get a little bit different lift in the two different foils here. Now this particular client has medium density with medium to coarse hair texture. So if you are working with somebody that has high density and has a very heavy hairline, I would probably recommend highlighting the hairline or also kind of dropping out some hair so you have enough background. So that would just be my little added tip. But she has lots of different hair growth patterns kind of going on, so overall this technique actually worked out beautifully for her. I didn't have to do any dropout. However, when I get to the interior, I did start to create that. You can overall see the pattern that I'm creating. It is diagonal backs and then also horizontals. So right here on this section is where I created that little dropout. I left her virgin hair existing right in that interior. And then I balayaged right on the surface of that. So the more uneven of a background that you create, the more natural end result you're gonna create. I don't really like to create very hard lines when I'm creating background because hard lines or straight lines is actually gonna give you a lot more contrast. So I'm looking for diffusion and softness throughout this entire technique. So this is why taking that zigzagged background and dropping it out, the more uneven, the more natural. So just always remember that. Of course, if you wanted to add more background, you can take these sections a lot more thinner. And if you wanna even take these balayage pieces a little higher to the root, I would probably avoid teasing altogether. So there's a lots of customization and variables throughout, but overall you can see the background that I've created with each of my sections is a triangle section. So a little added tip, if you wanna create a soft line of demarcation on those highlights, make sure to stroke your brush up and really saturate those mids and ends. That's how you're gonna really create that softness that you see a lot of people with highlights or color melts create. Now this section right here was a little wide for me, so I just wanted to show you my little added tip. I just kinda of put that little flap right on down over my highlights. So that's just kind of like my little secret that I do because sometimes I take the lightener up a little extra higher. So folding that little flap down on the back side of my foil is just gonna give me a little extra insurance. I'm starting to get a little closer to that front section which is where she had all of those highlights. So I did drop out any previously lightened pieces. And something to note here for this balayage, you'll notice that it's actually painted up a little higher on the left side. So everything that's more closer to the face, I like to paint my clay lightener higher. And this is because usually everybody loves having brighter and blonder hair closer around their hair frame. So in the back center, this is more balanced, so everything's in a V section. So just keep that in mind when you are deciding on placement. You want to constantly think about how the hair is actually falling and visually how are you going to want to paint it on because if you were to do it reverse, you're gonna have a lot of darkness around the face. So this is just something to kind of note when you're using a balayage technique. So now that I'm getting a little closer to the face, I decided to skip the clay lightener altogether, and that's more so just for the comfort of my client. So I decided to recreate a balayage effect with lots of TZ lights and the highlights alternating throughout this entire top section up until I get towards that face frame or money piece area. So I'm leaving very little hair as my dropout. Everything zigzagged and very diffused. 
So this is a perfect example right here where I have that highlight going much more higher, closer to the root area, and I'm feathering that right into that top section and then saturating my mids and ends and then the finishing that entire section there with a TZ light. So this is what's going to give me that depth that was created with the balayage in the back. Once I get the back section completely applied, I'm then going to start to work on the sides. Now I decided to isolate where her side part was all the way down and create essentially three sections. So both sides are identical and I like to highlight right on top of my section, meaning I'm going to create a little bit of background right around that hairline. This is just a personal preference of mine for my brunette clients. I think we look best with the hair color shade that we're born with. So I like to leave a little bit of that right around that hairline and just put the blonde kind of peeking through right behind it. Plus she has lots of little baby hairs that she's got going on here. So I didn't want to overwhelm that with a bunch of blonde. I'm only putting in two highlights with very little hair in between. And like I mentioned, this is just going to kind of like poke right on through if she wears her hair back. And then for my final section on the side, I'm teasing that entire piece. Now, usually people have very thin hair in this area, so that's why I'm teasing it. That's what's gonna create my background, but it's gonna give me the ultimate brightness and rooted look that we created in the back. Once I get both sides applied, then I'm gonna work on that very top section. Now, this is where I do like to put the highlights right onto the hairline, and that's just because I want the maximum amount of brightness right here on this top section. This is what's gonna create that money piece for me, and I am taking it pretty high up, just like I did on those side sections. I'm putting in two back-to-backs right here, Again, very, very little hair in between. These are one eighth sections. So once I get those in, this is where I'm gonna start incorporating my TZ lights because I still want to create a lot of dimension and diffusion just like I did in the back. She didn't want anything super bold right here. So this was really important that I maintained that depth without it being obnoxiously too blonde right here. So I still wanted to create that rootedness and depth. Now, if my client did want something super bold right here in this money piece area, I definitely would have went in with three back-to-back -back highlights with probably no hair in between and created something really bright and bold. But we're going for soft and pretty on top of this brunette canvas. Once I got all of my foils applied, I then decided to take a little peek at those hair painted balayage pieces in the back. Now I decided to go ahead and remove the foil and just do a little bit of reapplication. But look at what this looks like in just 30 minutes of processing. We got lots of blonde going on. So I'm really excited at this point to kind of see exactly how much lift we're getting. But I decided to go ahead and let it open air and finish on those foils and overall I processed her for a total of 40 minutes and then I mixed up her final color melt toner. So I'm using Kenra Professional Demi Permanent 6A and 5B equal parts and then two parts of my nine volume developer. Now I decided to use this formula because the 6A is going to cool out some of those warm level eight tones that I have. And the 5B is going to give me that rich brunette shade that I'm looking for. And it's going to look beautiful with her natural level three shade. For the mids and ends, I'm going to be blending that right into 7B, 8GB and 8SM one to two mixing ratio with nine volume developer. So also the purpose for this particular toner is because the 8SM is gonna give me that blue silver tone, which is gonna help neutralize a lot of these slightly orange tones that I have going on, but I'm also going to have a beautiful warm golden brown shade right for those mids and ends, which is exactly what we wanna create, that bronzy finish. I'm actually really excited with this type of lift that I got in just 40 minutes. And I am already really loving this placement as well. But like I mentioned, you can see a little bit of the warmth coming in. 
I did lift her to a solid level eight, which I was really happy with. And now I'm applying my color melt formula right onto that root area. So this is where that 5B and 6A is going to help deepen and also give me a little bit of dimension right onto that root area, making it very dimensional. So I'm pretty much taking this in that same sectioned area that I did in the very beginning, keeping that money piece out and working in the back. And I like to work in vertical sections. I just personally think that it gives me a really beautiful blend. And then once I get that on, on that first two inches, I'm then going to start combing it through. So I'm going to drag this right on down, giving me a gorgeous blend. And you can already see the deposit kind of happening right there in the back. Now for that front section, I'm barely tapping in my formula just in that first half an inch. And from there, I'm just gonna let that sit on, but I'm also gonna start in the back from the bottom right on up with my mid to end formula. Now, if you're working with a pretty dark color melt formula like I am with this one, I do like to use this little hack by putting a piece of foil right on the top and then clipping it down. So the hack for this is make sure you are not moving your clip. You're keeping the clip completely stationary and you're opening the teeth and simply adding the hair in there when you need it to. So it's kind of like your little handy dandy assistant. So for this application, I'm taking horizontal sections, combing it down and then applying my color right onto that color melt line and then using my hands to really work it in. So this is a combination of the comb and my hands and lots of manipulation and then stroking the product up into that darker formula. So that color already had a little bit of chance to go ahead and process. So once I get this all applied, I'm going to let the timer process for a full 20 minutes room temperature. Keep in mind, nothing in Kenra Color requires heat. So that's why I personally love it. I know that I'm gonna get amazing results from the hair color without any heat necessary. Now with Demi Permanent specifically, you do have options with applying on damp or dry hair. Now that's just gonna be a determination of the saturation and end result you're trying to achieve. But I applied her color melt onto freshly shampooed hair with Lux shampoo and then just towel dried her. So once that's done processing, I'm gonna take her right to the bowl do a thorough rinse. Now I am not going to shampoo this out. I typically don't shampoo out my toners, but I am gonna finish her off with Rapid Hydration Mask in Rich, cause like I mentioned, she is on the medium to coarse side. Now this is just gonna take as little as three minutes to give her her treatment. So this is a great add-on service in the salon. I start by applying it onto her mids and ends, and then I spend that next three minutes just massaging it right into her head. Overall, this treatment is gonna help improve softness and shine and give me high moisture retention. And it actually felt really amazing in just three minutes. So now I'm gonna finish her off with the style. I'm just layering in some pearl detanglers. This is like my favorite spray to start with i comb that through and then i'm layering in thickening mousse now there's a big misconception that you shouldn't use thickening mousse on already thick hair and while it does increase the density of the hair shaft i'm actually using it for its thermal protection and also for its lasting increased body that i'm going to get out of this so it has a really beautiful hold and i love using it on all hair types so i'm just going to give her a gorgeous blowout using my round brush. And then I'm going to layer in one of my favorite products, Silkening Heat Cream. So this specific product is applied onto dry hair. And this is actually gonna help prevent breakage and improve manageability. But what I love about it is that it does have the thermal protection and it reduces the styling time because you only need to do one pass. So I really love how silky and shiny this comes out. And I have to typically use very minimal finishing product after using silkening heat cream. Now, a lot of people love using this for flat ironing, but I love it with this iron. So this is a two inch T3 micro curling iron. Now it is really hot, but I have it on setting too. So if you do use this iron, make sure you have it on a lower setting because in addition with this silkening heat cream, you don't need to use super high heat. Now, once I get her all styled, I'm so excited to take her outside so I can see this gorgeous blend that you can already see indoors. 
but overall here is the final result of my hair transformation taking this natural level three to a gorgeous level eight bronzy finish using all camera color so just to give you a little recap i used clay lightener at a one-to-one -one mixing ratio with 30 volume developer and then for the highlights i used beyond bond lightener at a one to two mixing ratio with 20 volume developer and then finished her off with a color melt glaze using demi permanent 6a and 5b and blended that right into 7b 8GB and 8SM and processed her for just 20 minutes. This particular look can be touched up anywhere between 8 to 12 weeks so this makes it super low maintenance and gorgeous for any brunette shade. So I really hope you enjoyed this hair tutorial and if you did please give this video a thumbs up make sure to subscribe and if you want more education sent right to your inbox be sure to head on over to morellaminelli.com and sign up for my newsletter. And if you want to get your hair done by me and be a model in one of these YouTube videos, all you have to do is check out the link in the description down below. Be on the wait list for, to be one of my models. Just do it. Just do it. And if you're a hairstylist that wants to learn how to monetize, work with brands, and overall build their social media platforms, be sure to join me each month on Beyond the Chair Mastermind. It's a group community coaching session just for hairstylists and beauty pros that want to elevate their social media marketing game. And if you love listening to podcasts, be sure to check out my podcast called Hair BNB. It's all about hair, beauty, and business where I help simplify your hair, beauty, and business goals. And if you enjoy watching these YouTube videos but want a little sneak peek to the behind the scenes and sneak peeks to upcoming videos and basically what I do as a content creator, be sure to check out my YouTube membership. It's a small monthly subscription that you can just sign up here on the YouTube site. And finally, be sure to check out my other hair tutorials on this channel, give it a like, and share this video and my channel with a friend. And I'll see you in the next video.